Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, not the FinTech Frenzy. I don't know what this is. Um, late night stream. Someone sent me a DM. Uh, I wanted to go through with it with you guys. I brought Tevis on because um, I wanted some of his expertise. And I mean, truthfully, he was free and we, we talk a lot. So, uh, but that being said, um, there was a, and by the way, this is going to be a shorter stream. This is not going to be 30 minutes. It's not going to be an hour. I just wanted to talk about this piece of news because I think that it's important uh, and potentially what SoFi has been working on that, you know what, a lot of people have been sort of talking about SoFi being pretty quiet due to this new Robinhood news and all of this stuff. And I think that they're just going down a simply different direction than a lot of these other fintechs. Um, we saw SoFi post a new job posting. Um, a, a compliance officer for commercial payment services. This is not the first time that we've seen SMB banking style uh, different job offerings. We've seen about four now. Um, and it's not just this one job. They're also applying for multiples of them. Um, but I wanted to go through some of the... Oh, lost my contrast there. I wanted to go through some of these uh, things that they're talking about in the job. It kind of opens up what, what they're looking for and, and the different roles of this job that I was pretty surprised to see. But uh, Tevis, how you doing, buddy? Well, I just bring this up. Yeah, I'm doing well. <clears throat> um, in looking through this news, I mean, there's uh, the job that Tanner wants to talk about, but I think one thing that surprised me looking through all this was just the frequency that SOFA is consistently hiring across multiple different geographies and multiple different verticals in their entire business and i mean we can take a look at some of the postings you can filter the postings by the most recent ones and get a grasp of where the biggest demand is where the biggest need is for what they're hiring and i think that's just a good gauge overall to look through at you know consistent points in time yeah most of the time it's risk stuff uh you know product engineers on Galileo side. That's the stuff that I usually see. Uh, whenever you start seeing commercial roles and stuff like this, it's very few and far between, but yet they're hiring multiples of them right now at the same time. Um, essentially, in this talk, they say, uh, we're looking for a purposeful leader who's interested in building out the commercial payment services program for SoFi Bank. This includes collaboration with line of business partners, inclusive of Galileo Technologies, uh, a bunch of other stuff that they want to work with. But um, essentially, uh, in my opinion, they are talking about uh, getting into commercial, uh, look, clients for commercial debit and credit cards. Um, there's another part here where they talk about uh, assisting Galileo Bank and, sorry, SoFi Bank and Galileo, Galileo Leadership with identification and onboarding new clients. Um, it, it, first of all, Tevis, is this normal? Like whenever you see new roles that come on that are for SoFi Bank, but are also helping out Galileo? Like to me, I've always thought of them as mainly two separate businesses, um, but there's job overlap between the two different companies. Well, I mean, they are two separate businesses, but SoFi leverages Galileo. And so as a result of that, like you could make the argument to say that, okay, this job is going to oversee both of them directionally speaking as a new vertical or a new segment. But you could also make the even simpler connection to say, if I'm working with a software vendor like Galileo, it doesn't matter that it's under one umbrella, under one roof. I just need a role that bridges that gap, that maintains that relationship because Galileo has their own roadmap. They have their own um, you know, products that they're working on, their own um, verticals that they're expanding into their own right. channels. And so does that mesh with what SoFi as a company is doing? Galileo is servicing many customers in addition to SoFi. So if you have this separation of church and state, essentially where you have SoFi executing on the B2C side with an independent roadmap and then Galileo servicing the B2B side with an independent roadmap, you need a point of communication to bridge that gap between those two companies so that SoFi can get its internal requests into Galileo and have those prioritized in the roadmap somewhat. So makes sense at that like initial base layer but the job description itself highlighted you know commercial clients so that could also be something that they're setting up for so it, honestly i think that um sofi's new product announcements have been pretty quiet and i think that they're trying to work full steam ahead on getting smb banking lines 
active. It was even one of the things that in their 2026 guidance that they said, you know, we, we're not accounting for, for new lines of business. And the first one that he talked about was uh, small to mid-sized business accounts. There are yeah. many, many new fintech companies that are that are doing this, right? Brex, Mercury are the two biggest ones. Novo, Lilly, all these other ones that are going after SMB banking. The problem with those standalone companies is the same problem that uh, a firm or any of these companies are having is that they have to go out and acquire their own new company or uh, customers and pay for them and then offer them the service that potentially a larger incumbent player can just integrate buy now, pay later. So in this instance, I think that it's super beneficial to SoFi that, you know what, they have SoFi at work that they could instantly offer to their SMB banking clients. They can offer uh, the debit or credit cards that they offer and issue at SoFi Bank. They could issue their own cards, have them serviced by Galileo immediately. They could do secured, unsecured lending. I just think uh, instead of going down the route of traders and brokerages that, that Robinhood is going down, SoFi has a real opportunity to go after essentially just offering normal banking services uh, to a much broader range of of clients and i think that we're going to see a launch here pretty soon um and they keep we keep seeing these job postings over and over and over yeah i mean the other thing to consider and to keep in the back of your mind as you look through these job postings is that they are a leading indicator on the piece of news that come out because we know that a lot of the news has been in the behind the scenes building phase for a long time sometimes mm -hmm. years right what did um it was at the Chris Point fireside chat back in, in February where he was basically saying, you know, the, the top five bank that they've been working for, um, the documents that then came out that showed the connection between SoFi and City, that was end of 2022. And so even in the NBA news, right? NBA news broke in, in what, mid-January, early February, something like that. And immediately, like a week later, they had all the branded materials, it was a perfect synchronization with everybody got their, uh, you know, VIP invites in the mail and everything was ready. It's like, this has been in the works for quite a while. And the, so uh, the, the Kathy Wood one, right? They, uh, whenever they brought on the venture fund, they said they were talking for a year before that happened. Exactly. Right. And so how do you find that out? Well, somebody has to do that work behind the scenes and the job postings are the leading indicator. The news that comes out, the press releases are the lagging indicator, right? Like that mm. happens after the fact after a deal has been signed or done. These job postings give us hints towards what will come in the future. And we know that commercial side of the business is something that Anthony Nora has acknowledged. Um, it's it's something that's lacking. I mean, tax is the other one where now we're focusing a little bit more heavily on tax because um, of Anthony Nora's hints that he dropped. And so in order for them to become a one-stop shop and to vertically integrate that entire stack, like they need to expand these product lines more so than just competing head to head on a credit card basis, right? Like the, so if you want to bring it back to hood, like I think the talking points are simply that, hey, SoFi is just running a different race in terms of where they want to expand into. And these job postings are the proof in the pudding. Yeah, no, I, I just can't get over um, the opportunity that SoFi has because they own the tech stack uh, and going after this sort of, space that has been gone after from fintechs, but is still largely, largely dominated by the incumbent players, right? Um, I think this is right up SoFi's alley. Uh, whether or not that they feel like they have the sort of regulatory approval to go after a completely new demographic is something that I like. we do not have enough clarity on. Um, but it's well, my belief that they've been talking about this for some time, and... As this ramps up and we see more and more job postings, I think we'll see something soon. Um, you know, just just the offering of high APYs and and all their integrations that they already have, and the cross sell. Like, why are we not talking about the the cross sell of getting? They just launched a SoFi biz or the uh, SMB marketplace. Whoa, what's going on? Uh, you know, the marketplace for business loans. They launched that without having business accounts yet, right? Right. Why right. do that if you're not posting to business owners? Or, or are they just trying to get a gauge for how many potential crossover clients that they could possibly get? Yeah, and I'd rather them actually 
you know, do a lot of the work behind the scenes. And when they make an announcement, make it something like that's big as opposed to making like 10 little announcements. Um, so if it's going to take them an extra three months or an extra six months to gather all the required pieces of the puzzle to make a big announcement, hey, we're launching into small businesses and here's what the benefits are and here's our initial clients that we've already got through it and you're going to see this being reflected in the financials as early as next quarter. Like, okay, that makes a bigger splash than, okay, this is the direction that we're going into and, you know, here we did sure. some hiring for it and just work more behind the scenes and then when you make that announcement, then that's um, it's it's a bigger announcement to make for the market perspective. That's one thing. The other thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, you mentioned that they have the tech under one roof. And I think that's an interesting point because I just, I mean, I work at a tech company and, and a lot of times if they want to have Galileo as a self-sustaining business model, they can find that the bigger opportunity might be in companies that are not necessarily like SoFi. So larger financial institutions, uh, you know, more enterprise clients. And what I'm interested in finding out more of is the internal workings of how they comprise their product roadmap and their initiatives in general. Because on one hand, you could say, well, SoFi owns both of them. So it would make sense for SoFi to basically get all of their requests in as a B2C business for Galileo to build out. Sure. Or you could say, Galileo wants to grow independent of the B2C SoFi business. So Galileo is going to try to pick off the lowest hanging fruit. And those might not be companies like SoFi. And so as a result, SoFi, the core business, might be waiting longer to get a request in or for a feature or for you know a new initiative from Galileo because Galileo is actually servicing the maybe the legacy financial institutions, the ones that are doing the POCs with Galileo those types of businesses. And so let's just say you have a city, for the sake of an example, and in order for city to move forward with Galileo, they want a specific feature or a specific, uh, you know, buy now, pay later, for whatever reason, this, the sake of example, they want buy now, pay later. SoFi, on the other hand, might not want buy now, pay later. And so Galileo then has to make that balancing act to say, okay, do we service city to move faster from a growth rate as a pure technology play or do we always give priority to SoFi's asks because they're all on the one roof? Generally speaking, you would service City first and you would try to keep those as two independent growth paths as long as possible, which means that SoFi might not be getting all of the requests from Galileo just by sheer fact of being under one roof. They have independent work streams. So is that also why like whenever we got or we acquired Technicist that they said, hey, we'll probably be integrating this in sort of 2025? Because uh, it was my perspective that they were just trying to go after other clientele before they sort of self-serve. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I, I don't know. So if I might not want to be the guinea pig to test out technicists because it might not work immediately. And as a result of that, so if I might see some disruptions, they might put their own growth rate at stake. They might put their own reputation at stake. And so they might want to test it out with some other clients in the market. And then once they have a confidence interval that their meet their needs are going to be met then they try technicists like they're not in a rush in that sense yeah um i i agree with you and i think that uh it, it's been super great having you from the product perspective because it gets me to think a different way than just like hey you know why isn't sofi pushing out more pro like that's one thing that you always hear from people it's like why aren't they launching new products in their brokerage in their checking accounts, in their all the different lines, all at the exact same time. Um, but yeah, they just yeah, don't I mean, have. It's it's interesting, man, because like right now in my day job, you know, I'm leading a, a product and design team. And right now we're trying to achieve some pretty aggressive revenue targets that we can't achieve by organic scaling. And so we got to make decisions on what acquisitions we want to make. And that's been a really interesting research project internally because obviously we're conducting user interviews and we're trying to get a sense in the market of, you know, what channel do we want to expand into? And what we're finding is we have to strike a balance between expanding into a complementary channel. So if our product is, I don't know, uh, a lemonade stand, then you would say, okay, well, I want to sell lemons on the side or, or whatever it may be as a complimentary product offering, but something that's also a very big bang for your buck for your um, ICP, right? For your user persona, your core user. And so 
that leads me to believe that for Galileo's side, for example, SoFi as a business might not be their core user persona. It might be much larger organizations. And so by integrating technicists in-house, um, maybe future integrations, they build out their moat deeper and deeper, but their main target audience might be much larger organizations than SoFi. And as a result, SoFi is going to be not the first early adopter of all of these new product lines. They're going to be an adopter, of course, but they're going to wait to see how that works. And then they're going to uh, move forward with it. Well, I mean, <laughs> think about it. They're probably at a, about 150 million accounts right now. And SoFi makes up for, in terms of debit cards on, on Galileo. Yeah, nothing. Less than 2 million. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, they're obviously servicing much, much larger clients. Um, yeah, I like the comment that Toto brought up on, on build or buy decisions. This is like, this has been my life for, for like the past uh, couple of months. Um, basically, once you determine the channel that you want to expand into, the, the complementary product that you want your business to adopt, then you have to make a decision of like, okay, what is the cost for us to go and buy, I don't know, a small five or $10 million company versus uh, building out a team in-house? And what is the time required for that? What is the resource required for that? What could go wrong with that? What are some of the benefits? These are also decisions that obviously at a more massive scale, but companies like Galileo have to do um, in building out their moat even further in consolidating that product offering and making it more unique and making it more tailored to their target demographic. And so it is, I mean, it's it's indicative why they're hiring all these product people because a lot of the problems that they're solving are fundamentally product problems, right? Like where do we scale? How do we make sure that we meet the most needs? Uh, what are the requests that our target market is requesting from us? And how do we make sure that we sort of hit the biggest intersection in that Venn diagram of saying like, you know, enterprise, mid-market and SMBs, and they're all requesting some things in the intersection. Like obviously you wanna tackle those first, um, what does that look like from a channel perspective, not only from a feature perspective, like going a little bit more macro, and do we build that in-house or do we buy another smaller company? In the case of Technicist, they bought something, um, but in the case of you know a lot of stuff, they're building it in-house. Like they're not going out and buying a small buy now, pay later company, they're building buy now, pay later in-house, that integration, right? So I, I was gonna bring it up. So it's it's a little off topic, but uh, it is weird to me that the all the products that they have been launching at Galileo have been very buy now, pay later focused recently. It's like, is that where they're seeing the the rush of uh, like where the market's going? Like, I wonder why they're pushing it out or are they just easy launches for them to push out because they might already have uh, a large percentage of the puzzle already filled in? Yeah, I mean, just internally, like how we make decisions is we just go through a prioritization matrix and a couple of the vectors in that matrix are, you know, technical complexity. Is it easy to do or is it hard to do? How long will it this take to do? And we weigh that against the internal proactive direction of the business. Is this the direction that we want to go into? So in SoFi's case, is buy now, pay later a proactive push that they're making to say, oh, well, the buy now, pay later industry is going to be 700 you know, million, and we want to be able to capture that. Or the other vector that we uh, make decisions based on is customer feedback. If everybody's asking for buy now, pay later, then obviously that's going to get prioritized higher in that, um, in that work stream, in that roadmap. And so once you put all these things together, then you can sort of make a weighted uh, decision in terms of do I build by now, pay later now, or do I build it later? Hmm. So going back to SMB banking, and I know that this is not your um, product field in terms of just banking products and stuff like this, but to me, it doesn't seem that uh, personal line banking and or, or commercial line and consumer is all too much different right there's there's a bills aspect and a spending management and multiple cards and all of these things um but i wonder how far away from the core product that they already offer at sofi to get out the small to mid-sized business products that they want to get to i mean there's different layers that you can tackle that problem i'm not sure that we want to unpack all of it tonight but i think the first layer is really determining, are we doing that at the SoFi level or at the Galileo level? Because at the Galileo level, then all you're doing is you're enabling a lot of these functions through APIs uh, versus actually building like a, a GUI, like a user interface for 
um, a lot of these initiatives. And then if you're thinking about like SMB versus enterprise and you have to think about subsidiary management, you have to think about international organizations that have different books of business and merging all of that up. Um, and so this, it gets like, you get different layers of complexity given just the sheer size of the, the business. And so what they're looking for is, is quite different. I've actually worked on uh, accounting software just on the side um, on, on their product team. And, and you would be surprised, man, the asks that they're looking for in terms of what they want in an accounting type software is, is very different. And so for the banking side, it, it would be equally, um, equally as diverse in terms of the product offerings that they're looking for. And so again, I think coming back to this idea of who is their core target demographic, that will really give you an indication of what their product might look like. I mean, it, it, it's hard to speculate on a lot of that. I just, the way I'm seeing it is they're launching into, uh, and I'm talking more on the SoFi side specifically, the you know business marketplace is one of their newest products that they've recently launched. They deal to a more affluent user. Uh, like, I don't know, it just seems to be the way or the direction that they're more pointing toward um, as being their next largest product launch. Because from what I'm hearing, that level one options and these sorts of uh, brokerage the services that they want to launch are not coming till 2025. What is happening in the interim, right? Are we going to go a year without potentially new products and they're just going to be working on the back end stuff? So if you're looking at it from the, pro the SoFi side specifically and SMB, initially what my mind goes to is that it's just an easy connection to make with their existing banking side of their business because all of these self-employed individuals don't have alternatives for SoFi. And so that's just the next lowest hanging fruit. If you can get all of the self-employed cohorts that are banking with SoFi and you can give them the same benefits from a checking and savings perspective that you have the, the W2 workers at. And then on top of that, then you can provide them some services that are uh, catering to their business specifically. Like technically I am, you know, uh, I have, I'm like a one person corporation. Yeah, you're the mid-sized business. Exactly. Right. And it just works out for me from a tax perspective that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's beneficial, but there's a lot more that sort of goes into it than me being just a W2 employee, like a W2, you just get one form and that's it. And it's very simple like that. It's plug and play. Whereas for a corporation, there's expense management, there's uh, all of this layers of accounting. There's um, quite a few other avenues that I have to like jump through for me to essentially conduct the same business to come to the same conclusion. And so if you're thinking about it from SoFi, the B2C business, then it just unlocks an entirely new segment of the uh, of the market because all of these people are unserviced right now. And if you want to close that loop, then you need to be able to service those people and provide them an offering that's enticing enough to make them switch over. Do you think that, uh, we are going to see give me an give me your your estimate not your professional opinion or or like i just want your degen opinion do you think that this is going to be a product that we see this year the suspense is killing me yeah i could see it i could see it being something that's announced this year I don't think it's going to be like fully built out. Like I think that, I think if we don't get level one options, then either tax or SMB is on the docket for this year. I mean, in my, uh, yeah, but I just think about the opportunity that the tax product has, which they've been talking about for two years, by the way, is not very high in my opinion. Um, whereas the SMB side is a completely like sure. we're no longer reporting for three segments so, we're reporting for four <laughs> again think of it like of those three vectors that i laid out uh what is the technical complexity of tax versus smb what is the business direction of tax versus smb and then what is the like customer feedback let's say of tax versus smb you could find out that the technical complexity of tax is way easier and is actually servicing uh, a majority of the total addressable market because they have you know, 7 million members, a huge portion of those members would have a tax product that's applicable to them. So immediately off the bat, you have a utilitarian sort of benefit because 
if I can hit 80% of my user base with a new product, and that's going to be much higher levels of adoption than if I want to roll out, let's say, an SMB product and then start from scratch to like build up more uh, more users. So, yeah, but most of these built on tax products, like what Chime is doing, what you know, Wealth Simple, I just saw they have one as well. Most of the time, their their free option, the 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 core or basic level option, is the 90 plus percentile of what people choose, you know? that That's the thing that I don't really care about the tax product is that they're not um, like, yeah, there's gonna be a percentage of people that need, you know, the audit support and all of this stuff and uh, more complex solutions. But is that in the consumer side of the customers or is that leaning even more towards the, the, the corporate or freelance side? Look, if the goal is to roll both of these out and all we're debating right now is the order by which they're going to roll them out, then there's way too much information that we don't have from the outside looking in that is crucial to making that decision if you're SoFi as a company. Um, okay, so uh, this went so much longer than I expected. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick like 10 minute video and then just to just to say that this was uh, news and that I'm s getting super excited about uh, small to mid sized businesses. And maybe that is fronted by my love for how well it's going on with other companies like Newbank and such. But um, yeah, Tevis, thank you so much. I know I kind of got you uh, away from, you know, friends and family on a late Saturday night, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you all so much. Uh, this has been the the what 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 is it called? TT. What it was? I think I'm gonna clip portions of this and just post it as a separate video. Maybe add some commentary on the side. Do it, man. Do it. Yeah, yeah Tevis is drinking a non Celsius product right now. <laughs> I finished the Celsius. I'm not gonna crack another one. Um, <laughs> I. I bet he's red in his shop uh, portfolio talking about Tanner. Yeah, oh, you would be mega wrong, my friend. <laughs> that's That's been one of my better picks. Um, all right. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.